I was born on the 1st of January at exactly 12 a.m. Mom says I was looking directly at her and smiled the first time she held me. I was sitting up by the time I was four months, walking when I was only seven months, and talking by the time I was 10 months old. Growing up, I heard people telling my parents that I was special, but I always felt like I wasn't smart enough. That's why I read a new book every day. By the time I was 10 years old, I'd read everything from Shakespeare to Stephen Hawking. Dad, who was a brilliant scientist, always challenged me to do more. But Mom would take my books away at 10 p.m. sharp and switched off the lights. I'd sometimes read by torchlight after she left. But things got out of hand sometimes. I became obsessed with being the best at everything, which is why in the eighth grade, I couldn't believe it when I found out I was the runner-up in the science fair. I tried smiling for the camera, but I felt so disappointed in myself that I just burst into tears and ran off the stage. As we walked out of the school, Mom said, What was that all about? You're still second best, and that's amazing. Dad looked over at her. There's no such thing as second best. You're either the best or you're not. I was sure Dad was right. Or at least, that's what he says. Yeah, I'm such a loser. Why can't I be smarter? As I sulked in the car on the drive home, Mom pulled over in front of my favorite ice cream place. Well, I think being second deserves some celebration. Why don't you go get your favorite sundae, honey? I grinned reluctantly and got out. Just then, I stepped right into an ice cream cone melting on the footpath. I slipped and went flying in the air, landing on the ground with a thud. My head hit the hard concrete and everything went black. Hi, I'm Eleanor. And this is the crazy story of how I went into a coma and woke up a genius. Before I continue, click like and subscribe. As soon as I opened my eyes, mom hugged me and started crying while dad quickly called the doctor. Apparently, I'd been unconscious for three days. After examining me, the doctor said I seemed perfectly fine and could go home, but I just felt different. Honey, is everything okay? You seem a bit lost. Oh yeah, nothing. I was just thinking about string theory. String theory? Yeah. I was just thinking that if we express the string theory in 11 dimensions, it leads us to Einstein's relativity equations. Isn't that really cool? Everybody looked at me like I'd gone crazy. The doctor said I was probably babbling because of the blow to my head. Babbling? What she said makes complete sense. How do you know that, Eleanor? Oh, I don't know. I just know. Mom, can we buy some ice cream on the way back home? The next day at lunch, as I looked for a place to sit, I found my math teacher and another professor arguing over something. I'm telling you, I've tried every calculus method in the book. I don't know how to integrate x squared times e to the minus x. Um, have you tried differentiation under the integral sign? The two turned to look at me in shock. That's brilliant! Do you, do you actually know how to use this technique, Eleanor? I can give it a try! And with that, I joined their table and started solving the problem. When I was done, the two teachers stared at me with their mouths open. Next thing I knew, my parents were called to the principal's office and the math teacher was going on and on about how gifted I was. After a series of tests, we found out that I had an IQ of 160, the same as Albert Einstein's. I was immediately bumped up a few grades. Becoming a genius was like turning into a whole new person overnight. I only had to read something once, and I understood it perfectly. Complex physics concepts and math theorems just all started making sense, and I was fascinated by everything I was learning. I could solve all sorts of problems at warp speed, and it felt amazing. One day, the guidance counselor told my parents to apply to a great school for gifted students in Finland. I applied and was accepted within a week on full scholarship. And before I knew it, I was flying over to Finland. 
My mouth dropped open as the cab drove up to the huge, castle-like school building. Waiting at the main entrance was a jolly-looking man who smiled at me as I stepped out. Well, it's nice to finally meet the little genius from Chicago. I'm the principal, Mr. Aaron, and we're very excited to have you here. An IQ of 160? Amazing! He was really kind and welcoming. The next day, as I went to my first class, I noticed the other kids looking at me curiously. But there was one girl who did not look happy to see me. I instantly recognized her as the mean girl of the class. Just then, the math teacher walked in with the principal right behind him, who quickly slipped to the back of the classroom. The teacher announced an oral quiz, and I was on the edge of my seat. Turns out, things weren't that easy in a class where everyone was a genius. As the questions got harder though, it was clear that my main competitor was the mean girl, Janice. We were both neck to neck with our scores. Well done girls, now here's a tough one to break the tie. Give me a number that when divided by the product of its digits, the quotient is 3. And if you were to add 18 to this number, the digits would be inverted. There was a short pause. 24. And we have a winner! As the class broke into applause, I turned back to see the principal beaming at me. But Janice looked like she wanted to eat me alive. Later that day in the cafeteria, I joined some kids from my class and was having a really good time when suddenly Janice came over and slammed down her tray. So, just because you got one more question right, you think you're the smartest girl in the universe now? Uh, I didn't even say, well you're not! And I challenge you to a game of speed chess! Challenge accepted! She instantly set up a chessboard at the lunch table, and before I knew it, we were in the middle of a really intense match with half the school watching us after janice made another move she looked at me and i smiled you lose what the game isn't over yet yeah it is my knight to e7 your king to h8 bishop blocks queen to h5 checkmate i could see her working out the moves in her head and then suddenly she screamed and knocked the board right off the table as she stormed off angrily a girl leaned in and whispered she's the principal's daughter i wouldn't mess with her if i were you a few weeks had gone by, and I was loving everything here, except for the death glares I kept getting from Janice. One evening, I was called into the principal's office. When I got close to the door, I heard voices from inside. But Daddy, I want to take a shot at it too! I have an IQ of 140! Why do you treat me like I'm dumb? Because you're not the best! The only place that matters is the number one spot! Now stop wasting my time and go away! Just then, the door burst open and Janice stormed out, crying. She just looked at me and spat out, I hate you, and went running down the hallway. When I walked into the office, the principal greeted me with his usual broad smile. Eleanor, I have an amazing opportunity for you. There's a famous mathematical problem that's gone unsolved for decades. It has a million dollar prize for the person who solves it. I really believe that could be you. Wouldn't you love that? You can use my private study to work in peace. And you can have anything you want. You just name it. Um... I'd really love some Doritos. I have no idea what those are, but I will search all of Finland and get them for you. You just work on this and make us proud. I poured over the problem for days, barely leaving the study. I became obsessed. I started missing my classes, but the principal said I didn't have to worry about that right now. One night, I'd fallen asleep at the desk when I woke up with a start. Of course, I couldn't believe the answer had been in front of me all this time. The next morning, I was up early waiting for the principal outside his office. I, I think I solved it. He settled in his chair, and as his eyes scanned the pages, they grew wider. And 10 minutes later, he looked up at me in shock. Unbelievable. I really think you've done it. Then suddenly, I saw an expression on his face i never seen before. Now, get out of my office, please. Wait, what? Aren't we going to submit the solution, sir? Oh, yes, but not we. Just me. What does a little girl like you need a million dollars and all that credit for? Oh my god! You're an evil jerk! You can't steal my work! I can! Watch me! And with that, 
He shoved me out of the office and slammed the door in my face. I couldn't believe he made such a fool out of me with his nice guy act. That evening, as I paced my room furiously thinking about what to do, Janice suddenly walked in. What do you want? I know what he did, Eleanor. I know what he's really like. We can't let him get away with this. For the first time, I realized we were a lot alike. We both just wanted to be the best, and our dads had always made us believe we just weren't smart enough. I'm listening. A few days later, the principal was planning to make a presentation in front of his colleagues and board members. Janice and I snuck into the conference room as everyone gathered there. The principal stepped up in front of the mic. Before I start, I just want to say that I'm so excited to present the solution to a problem that has baffled so many brilliant minds. This will do wonders for the reputation of our school. With that, he switched on the projector. Everybody stared at it, looking unamused, while Janice and I nearly burst out laughing. Mr. Aaron looked at the slide in horror and quickly shut the laptop off. <clears throat> Clearly, there's been some mistake here. No matter. Let me distribute copies of my solution. As everyone opened up the pages, they stared at him angrily. Is this some kind of joke, Mr. Aaron? Why are you wasting our time? And with that, everyone got up and started leaving, looking really displeased. When the room was empty, we came out of our hiding place and the principal turned purple. You! You stole my paper and changed the slides! No, you stole my paper and we just took it back! And it's already on its way to be reviewed by the country's mathematics board under my name! And he screamed in rage. Janice and I walked out arm in arm. At the door, Janice turned around. Daddy, put a password on your laptop next time. I know your IQ is only 126, but that was kind of dumb, even for you. Fast forward a few weeks, and I was invited to a ceremony in Belgium to receive my prize for solving one of the greatest math problems of our times. Mr. Aaron quit and left, and no one knows where he is now. I'm graduating school next month and heading off to university soon. With the prize money, I have big plans to open a school where all sorts of kids feel valued. Janice and I have become really good friends, and I sometimes let her beat me at chess. <laughs>